Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to the ninth virtual Palm Beach International Equestrian Center educational series presented by Adequan here at the Winter Equestrian Festival for week nine. My name is Miranda Tiona, and I am your returning host and educational series coordinator here for the 2021 season. We have four more weeks remaining to learn together every Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Again, another exceptional turnout last week with viewers joining from all over the world and continental United States. Your participation in the series is most appreciated. It's because of you. Thank you. Now, throughout the session, to engage virtually with us, but most importantly, to engage with the speakers, please utilize the Q&A message center at the bottom of your screen. You should see a small icon that says Q&A. Please note the chat is disabled. The Q&A is the only way to engage with us. So please utilize that. You can also ask questions at any time during the session. It will not disturb the presentation at all in any way by the speakers and we love interaction. So please send your questions. Lastly, I would like to say a huge thank you to Karina Brez Jewelry for providing a luxury item for our grand prize giveaway, which is a limited edition light pink diamond, 18 karat rose gold horseshoe necklace valued at $3,000. How it works. For every session that you attend, we can see the stats. You will get one entry and the winner will be announced April 1st, our very last session together. You don't have to be present to be on that, um, on that webinar to win. We will simply be emailing you with the email that you registered with. So hope you check it. <laughs> all right, now with all that said, let's begin. I am delighted to introduce today's topic and speakers. Today's educational series session is sponsored by Beamer. And the topic is Beamer Horse Set Research Findings, Benefits on General Anesthesia. The Beamer Horse Set is known throughout the equestrian industry for their revolutionary technology, helping horses to recover and perform their best. This year, Beamer is happy to provide research findings on the benefits of the Beamer Horse Set usage on horses that have undergone surgical procedures and are looking to return to competition top shape sooner than ever before. Beamer North America is a subsidiary of Beamer International AG, a leading global medical device company specializing in the research and development of microcirculation products for both humans and horses. Founded in 1998, Beamer now operates in over 40 countries. Beamer is a leading innovator in physical vascular therapy technology and holds FDA class two and Health Canada clearances along with numerous technology patents. We have two excellent speakers for you today. Our first speaker is Dr. Joshua Burka, who is a naturopathic medical doctor who is versed in both Eastern and Western medicine. His interest in a world beyond biochemistry and drugs led him to the field of biophysics and related therapeutic modalities that innovate modern medicine. Dr. Burka has become an expert in many biophysical therapeutic applications, including pulsed electromagnetic field therapy, PEMF. 13 years ago, in his global exploration of the most researched and effective PEMF device on the market, he discovered bioelectromagnetic energy regulation, Beamer, while vetting an array of products that deploy PEMF. Beamer technology not only made logical sense, but the safety and ep efficacy of the product had also already been scientifically proven. Beamer is unique 
from any other biophysical modality on the market in that it directly positively influences the most functional aspect of the cardiovascular system, that being microcirculation. Dr. Burka is involved with the research and development of the Beamer, Beamer product and the advancement of the technology for use on earth and in space. Dr. Joshua Burka has served as a medical consultant for Beamer USA for 12 years. Our next speaker is Dr. Olivier Brandenberger, who is a veterinary surgeon originating from Switzerland. He graduated from B Bern University in 2011 and afterwards performed an internship and residency at Grosbois Clinic in Paris under the supervision of Dr. Rosignol. In 2018, he received his diploma from the European College of Veterinary Surgery. Currently, he is one of three partners at the Hansa Clinic for Horses in Northern Germany and is responsible for the surgical section of the clinic. He is married to Amadine, who is also a veterinarian, and she performs the anesthesia of his surgical patients, and both are owners of five warm blood horses for show jumping. I'd like to thank both of our speakers for being here today, but I'd like to emphasize um, Dr. Brandenberger is actually joining us from Europe, and it is midnight his time, so let's hope he's had plenty of coffee so let's give him an extra special welcome for staying up with us so late. <laughs> and of course, to Dr. Joshua Burka, um, who we're also very excited to have as well. So I will now, without further ado, I will welcome our very first speaker of the day, Dr. Joshua Burka, to turn on his camera, unmute himself, and begin his very excellent presentation. Thank you all very much. Thank you so much, Miranda, for a fabulous introduction. Please do let me uh, share my screen here and we'll get this going. All right, everything is good. So thanks again for having me. I'm gonna flip through this. I am Dr. Joshua Burka. I've been a medical consultant for Beamer for uh, over the past decade, 12 years or so. And I wanna appreciate each and every one of you for being here today. At Beamer, we research and develop treatment options for both humans and animals, more so from the equine market. And our devices, they are designed as vascular therapies to improve blood flow and support the self-regulation of blood flow within the smallest vessels, that is the microcirculation. This results in more adequate blood, adequate blood circulation and distribution effectively to support the entire vascular system, not just the microcirculation, but that as a whole. Beamer slogans, better circulation, better health, better life. People and horses do have a very unique bond and we respond to each other. And Beamer takes that into account. They didn't just make a device without consulting the veterinarians. Many veterinarians, physicians, horse enthusiasts, and riders alike have adopted Beamer therapy or the Beamer horse set to support both performance, recovery, and regeneration for their animal. We say it's made for riding, riders and loved by horses. Doesn't matter whether you're a jumper, dressage, eventing, regardless of where you're in professionally or recreationally, Beamer has a place for you both on the human side as well on the horse side. I used to own horses growing up myself. I wouldn't uh, say that I'm an equine enthusiast uh, at this point in time, but I am because of Beamer. And it's important to keep them healthy, to feed them properly, to support the regeneration and ensure proper performance, mitigate or limit stress or help them respond or recover to stress naturally, as well as the equipment and the gear and the tack that it takes uh, to keep your horses in good health. There's a lot of challenges, as you all know, to owning a horse, to supporting them in their best health and wellness. They tend to be stressed if they, for instance, we know that horses are prey animals. And so when we look at this, they have a good startle response. I call this relaxed readiness. They are relaxed, but at the same time, their nervous system is tuned to be able to go in any direction at any time. They can have a decreased adaption to exercise or not connecting with the rider, even resistance to the rider. Digestive problems are also very common in horses. 
And that sometimes can have muscle tension in the musculoskeletal system, which has a direct effect on performance as well as degenerative diseases, as well as acute and chronic illnesses. Injuries are happening all the time, especially for your uh, equine friends who are in the performance world. Skin issues, musculoskeletal issues, uh, soft tissue traumas. It's not just the trauma, sometimes they go out and perform too quickly and they never heal completely from those injuries. The microcirculation in a horse and the microcirculation in a human is really not that different. We're more similar than we are different. And it's because of how the nervous system interacts with that unique aspect of controlling the micro pulsations at the smallest level of vessels. Poor blood flow. And again, this isn't something that you might see um, clinically so much. It's subclinical. It can lead, lead to impaired cellular metabolism, restricted organ function, and decreased self-regulatory mechanisms. You'll hear me talking about this today, this autonomic regulation, parasympathetic, sympathetic. The ultimate or the optimal function of the tissue has to depend on how blood flow is moving. Are tissues perfused? Are they not perfused? As well as waste products, metabolic waste products being removed from these tissues. Poor blood flow also causes a variety of health problems, decreased energy, performance, impaired healing, uh, post-trauma, insufficient regeneration, as well as susceptibility to infection. Uh, and like I said before, that delayed wound healing. Horses circulation, so the horse's circulation and a human circulation, while it may operate similarly, I mean, the horse's heart is not the same, the amount of blood, and depending on the size of the horse, we're talking 30 to 55 liters for Canadian European folks, and between eight and 15 gallons of blood that's being pumped through that body all the time. And it's not just through these vessels that you see that where you do venipuncture and you're injecting, over three quarters of the body, both humans and horses, are directly related to the micro vessels. That means those vessels less than a couple hundred microns. You can see as an example here on that left side, this is a human heart. You can see an angiogram. These are 500 nanometers or larger vessels. This is where we go in and look at um, with angiograms. And when you look to the right side, this is both the macro and the micro. Look at all those micro vessels. Like I said, more than three quarters of the microcirculation makes up the entire vascular system. Pretty impressive. For those of you who are healthcare practitioners, every one of us was taught in school that this heart in the center of our chest or in our horse's chest is pumping the blood through the body. And I used to believe that, but now the more I understand microcirculation, vascular flow, hemodynamics, both macro and micro hemodynamics, that's absurd. There's no possibility that this heart can pump all the blood through that horse's body, thousands of gallons alone. It does pump, but the micro pump, the micro pulsations are key here. And these micro pulsations are controlled or modulated by smooth muscles. And these smooth muscles, you can see on the left side, when they're relaxed, blood flows and more blood moves. When they're constricted, it impairs the blood flow. And this is important because you have to shunt that blood to areas of metabolic need. All blood can't flow full speed and around the whole body at the during the whole time. So it shunts blood as needed. Blood comes in, as you can see on the left from the arterioles, starting with large caliber precapillary to small caliber. Uh, the capillary network is where this exchange happens. Metabolic wastes are removed and nutrients are delivered or maybe in the opposite manner and then they're cleared through the veins and venules back through the heart lungs. Take a look at this because our vessels are not just stagnant pipes. Microcirculation is the smallest vessels, but it's these vasomotor functions. This is not in a horse, this is in a human being, but this is real time what's called spontaneous vasomotion taking images through intravital microscopy. Not only do these vessels have the capacity to oscillate they can actually reverse and change blood flow. These oscillations are called vasomotion and vasomotor function is in charge of moving blood where it needs to go based on metabolic needs, independent of the heart rate, independent of the respiratory rate. You can even see in this image here, as the blood is flowing and they start to constrict, it will change the rate and rhythm of those that flow pattern 
both low motion and vasomotion, and even reverse the blood flow. You can see it happening right here, ladies and gentlemen. So I want to flip from this and really look at something beyond vasomotion and talk about flow motion. It's not just the vessels that are opening and closing, it's the blood that's pumping and moving. Our blood does not move like a hose in a laminar fashion. It's pumped and it slows down. It's pumped and moves and slows down because it needs to drop off oxygen. It needs to drop off nutrients and then pick up waste products, rather drop clear waste products in that way. So this is called flow motion. And don't just take it from my perspective or from my mouth. This is straight from the horse's mouth. Healthy circulation is the horsepower for health. How do we treat impaired vasomotion? You don't do it with drugs. You don't do it with surgical intervention. There are no conventional medical treatments that have a direct effect on vasomotor function. This requires a true biophysical stimulation. And that biophysical stimulation is very unique. And it's not all systems like you're seeing here that emit a pulsed electromagnetic field like Beamer that have this effect. Beamer's waveform and signal are the active ingredients that yield to the positive results that equine experts and riders have also come, known, come to know as well as trust. I said no other PMF device has demonstrated this scientific research and clinical results with respect to improving circulation like Beamer, point. Period, that's the end. There are other products out there that also use PMF, but they do not influence the body, the horse's body in a neurovascular interactive way like Beamer therapy. How does this work? The electromagnetic field is pulsed through the applicators, the blankets or the cuff. It has a direct effect on the musculature, all cells and tissue, and it influences the blood vessels. When you get inside the vessel, you can see the changes of how both vasomotion occurs and flow motion. You can't see the coils here, but Dr. Brennenberger will show you a picture of them. These weren't just placed for, for kicks, for fun. There are 19 coils, three coils on each of the cuffs, totaling 25. And these coils in the blanket have a direct interrelationship where these nervous or nerval plexuses are located. So there's a direct influence on the nervous system. And we can see the great effects on the neurological or balancing of the nervous system. This is actually intravital microscopy in the distal area of the colon of the horse. And you can see the difference in changes between before using the Beamer and after. And no, this isn't just sped up video. Beamer even works not just when it's on the horse, the effects extend even after the field is pulled away. It's almost like a somatic re-education supporting the autonomic regulatory factors that ensure healthy blood flow. Beamer is very easy to use. It has a very wide therapeutic window. You have choices of three programs, program one, two, or three, five, 10, or 15 minutes respectively with maximum average flux density on the blanket up to 35 microtesla and on the cuffs up to 100 microtesla. So very, very effective and not um, a high power is not needed for this because Beamer really depends on the information that's being delivered to influence physiological processes, specifically microcirculation. Equine therapy, Beamer equine therapy, how's it benefit? Health. The overall health is supported through functional circulation. If you're not in the flow, you are not in good health. That's a simple fact, whether you're a human or an animal. By enhancing blood flow, you have good improved delivery of nutrients and removal of waste products. In sports, it's a requirement, whoops. It's a requirement that your horse is able to focus, is able to be supple if you're in the uh, event where you're riding, uh, supporting endurance, strength, and most importantly, there's no way a horse can uh, perform unless they recover. And so it's this balance of performing, training, recovering that allows for this ultimate aspect of being at one's highest performance. Rehab. I've uh, looked at humans and I've looked at horses and rehabilitation with Beamer is exquisite, sometimes in half the amount of time. There's accelerated recovery, enhanced regeneration processes, as well as the support of this parasympathetic uh, activity that's crucial and vital to the healing process. You must be able to move into a relaxed position to actually move into that healing mechanism. 
moderating and modulating inflammation. This supports resiliency, which folds into prevention, which we'll get to, and avoids further injury, which we see so many times in horses who are pre-injured. Maybe they're getting maybe a corticosteroid injection, getting back up there, and they're staying in a low-grade inflammatory state, setting them up potentially for future injuries. Prevention is my favorite area. And when you're perfused, you're protected. And the blood flow that's moving supports your immune system. This improves ATP, energy production, and not just stress relief, but supporting resiliency. That ability to interact with the physical world around a horse and respond appropriately versus react. This is autonomic balance between parasympathetic, sympathetic, and this is supported by Beamer, the self-regulatory processes. Beamer encourages relaxation of the recovery process as a review, helps to prevent anxiety and stress, increasing performance, supporting training exercises and suppleness, that connection with the rider, improving defense against affection, promoting regeneration, which follows exertion. You have to recover to perform, and it aids in the healing mechanisms following injuries. Also to note, has a very positive impact on anesthesia procedures and regeneration following surgery which Dr. Brandenberger will certainly speak about. On that note, I would um, like to introduce, uh, Dr. Brandenberger was already introduced and I wanna thank you Dr. Brandenberger for being here today. And I will share it over to you. Hello everybody, thank you very much uh, Joshua for this uh, kind introduction and this absolutely beautiful speech, um, which explains a lot. And um, I would like to go on. Um, I'd like to thank also for the invitation to share our experience um, of the Beamer horse therapy, which we use during general anesthesia uh, in horses. So we can go one slide further. So I would, um, I would like to uh, share this talk. Um, we start first why uh, we have a lot of surgeries in northern Germany and when we have a lot of surgeries I mean we have a lot of general anesthesias. Um, just to give you a little update of why that's the, the point and then also talk about um, the challenges of general anesthesia in horses. Um, I, I assume that a lot of, of you have already had a horse in general anesthesia and I would like to uh, share a little bit uh, the difficulties of this um, uh, of of these uh, horses, and then um, I would like to share why and how we use the Beamer horse set during general anesthesia, after general anesthesia, and also what's ahead in the in the future. So, just to, to a very short, brief update that of our clinic. This is in northern Germany. We have a clinic. Um, in the middle of three large breeding areas, uh, which uh, you might know, the Hanoverian, the Oldenburger and the Holsteiner horses. Um, there's a lot of young horses and these young horses, they have, uh, they need surgeries, um, either for, for the um, articulations or for the castrations, or um, uh, as we have uh, in our clinic, we're specialized on eye surgery, so ophthalmology. We have a lot of horses that have eye problems and also, uh, which is more my uh, field of interest, larynx surgeries, which is throat surgeries on these young surgeries. So we do approximately 1,000 horses, 1,000 general anesthesias a year. Then we can go on. And um, the interesting part about this is that we have a, a specialist of ophthalmology in our clinic and he performs around 300 vitrectomies per year. Vitrectomy is a surgery that is used in, um, in horses that have equine recurrent uveitis, which means they have an infection um, or have an, an inflammation because, uh, because of leptospira in the eye. And the surgery consists of uh, flushing out these uh, in inflammation products of the posterior chamber of the eye. And um, in our clinic, it's always the same surgeon, it's always the same nurse, it's always the same assistant, the same anesthetist, which gives these for these 300 surgeries quite a unique and uniform um, setting. And this is also something that we need when we do studies 
that we have a, a uniform, unique setting. So this was a perfect condition to study the Beamer effects. The problem with general anesthesia is, and I think, as I already said, I, a lot of you have already had experience with their horses being um, put under general anesthesia, uh, and the doctors will have explained to you that the, um, the horses, when they get the medications for general anesthesia, they suffer from cardiovascular depression, which means that their um, blood pressure goes down. And um, when the blood pressure goes down, the blood uh, is in the periphery, is not flowing very well, and this is not good for the muscle for the muscle muscular circulation, which means the muscles they don't get enough oxygen, so they suffer also from hypoxemia. On the other hand, if you have um, general anesthesia and the horses uh, they have to get up after general anesthesia, everyone is afraid of that. The recovery of the horses, the recovery phase can be quite violent. First of all, because the horse is, a, is an animal that wants to go away when he's, when he's afraid. Um, and there, uh, one point is very important, that is the anesthetist. And the anesthetist, he has to um, make sure that the horse gets not in a too deep of a plane of anesthesia, which means if he gets too much medications during the general anesthesia, is more likely to have a violent uh, recovery. So the anesthetist can influence this quite a lot and try to make a balanced anesthesia in order that the horse uh, gets up nice uh, after surgery. Then one thing that is very important, and I put a, a nice picture of a very uh, a large horse we had uh, currently for um, an articular surgery. You can see how this horse, when it's lying on its back, all the muscles of the back are completely compressed. And in this case, it were like 850 kilograms uh, putting pressure on these muscles. And when, the, uh, when there's pressure on these muscles, the vessels are also compressed and they don't get enough flow. So the, these muscles, they don't get enough blood, they don't get enough oxygen, and also the waste products are not uh, put away. And this is, um, we can go to the next slide. Oh, I, I already said about the eventful recoveries. Um, and there were two pictures what can happen and no one wants that. So we try to improve, um, we try to improve the, the general anesthesia. You can go to the next one, that's okay. And uh, what are the ideas? What are the areas for improvement? So first of all, <laughs> avoid general anesthesia. So we try to do a lot of standing surgeries. And on the left, you can see I'm doing a larynx surgery, a throat surgery of the horse. And um, this is performed on the standing horse if the horse is, is willing to, to do that just with a sedation. This for sure avoids the, a lot of complications from the general anesthesia. Um, but if, for example, in the ophthalmology field where um, this is a called so-called microsurgery, where the surgeon has to be very precise and the eye has not to move at all during surgery, this is not possible to be performed standing. So we have to figure out another idea. And on the right, you can see um, it's actually my wife um, doing a assisted recovery of a horse. So with the ropes, we try to guide them um, after surgery, this was a fracture, a fractured limb. You can see uh, the leg there. And these horses, we try to guide them with the ropes, but this is also not so easy because we have a lot of young horses and the young horses, they can get afraid of the ropes. And once they're up and they start to, to, to get um, afraid and they start to run around and they can also hurt themselves because they have ropes attached to the head and to the tail. So this is not also not always possible to perform an assisted recovery. So, and then we can go to the next slide. We were thinking about um, going on. So finding other solutions to help the horses during general anesthesia. And um, we uh, came out with the Beamer horse therapy because, and as uh, Dr. Berka ex explained very nicely, it increases the microcirculation. And this is what we want during search. We want that the horses, they have a good blood flow in the peripheric field. So um, we, uh, we wanted to see, and we also used it because of that, that the, that the microcirculation is enhanced during general anesthesia in the horse.
So this is how we do this. Um, we, on the left side, you can see that we also use uh, invasive blood pressure to check the blood pressures. And then we, um, on the right side, you can see how we put the blankets on the horses during general anesthesia in order, especially for the muscles to get these uh, muscles um, nicely uh, with a nice blood flow. And you can also put the horse on the blanket. So the blanket is actually stable enough that you can put the horse, first the blanket on the table and then the horse on top so that the underlying muscles, they are also more, um, they also get more microcirculation and are stimulated. So what we did um, in our clinic, um, we did a, a study, which is a placebo control study, which is a double blinded, which means we had two groups of horses that we uh, used for vitrectomy surgery, normal client horses, um, and we put the blanket on. We had, uh, as I said, two groups, one with a functional blanket and one with a non-functional blanket. And in this publication, we um, we figured out all the effects on the blood pressure, on the muscle enzymes, on the lactate, on the recovery. And um, this is what we, the results we will publish um, in, in a study that uh, for the moment is under review. Um, this is always uh, difficult to say how long it takes this review. I would say uh, until summer, I think we should get it published that you can read all the results there in detail. So after this study, after we have done this study, um, we started to use the, the Beamer um, horse uh, set for the for the general anesthesia in a routine fashion and we do this before during and after general anesthesia we start before general anesthesia um, to calm the horses down to make them a little bit like sedated you all know the effect um, if you have already used the beamer horse therapy on on, on a standing horse they they like this they get settled um, they get a bit calmer. We have a lot of young stallions that we have to uh, do the surgery on, and this helps them to get ready for the surgery. Then, as I already have shown, we use it during general anesthesia to improve the microcirculation um, that is uh, diminished with, with the isoflurane um, medications. And we also use it after general anesthesia um, to get all the waste products out, to get all the toxins out. And um, for example, on, on the right side, you can see a horse um, I did surgery on um, ten, approximately 10 days ago. This, this was a, a horse that was um, with the rider who fell down a bridge. Um, about uh, three meters down into a hole and he couldn't come out. And so he was struggling a lot. They had to get the, the, the fire department to, to hoover him out. So this horse, when it arrived at the clinic, he had already sore muscles, started to have a myositis and he had a large wound here on the forearm. Um, you can see the bandage there with also a ruptured artery. So we had to put him in general anesthesia, even though he was not in a good state to be in a general anesthesia. Um, I sutured the whole limb. We used the blanket during the surgery and we used it during recovery. And I was very afraid that this horse would not get up because of all the muscles that had already been damaged. And, and when horses get a myositis, they get like a to in a toxic state and they can um, not recover from general anesthesia. It got up very well. I was very happy, and um, the the limp, uh, the wound is healing quite well for the moment. So, as a as a conclusion, I think um, one important feature is that uh, what we saw when we did the study, and also when, when what we see when we do the, the daily use of the blanket, that um, the, the the horse, the, the beamer horse therapy. Um, helps during the general anesthesia to improve microcirculation. And for this, you have to pay attention. You, when you're a vet, you have to tell your anesthetist, um, please reduce the dose of medication, the dose of medicaments that you give, because as it is more circulating, the horses get quickly into a deeper plane of anesthesia. So pay attention to that, which is good, because then um, the anesthetist can get a lighter and more balanced anesthesia with less medications. And therefore, as you can see on the, on the, on the right picture, um, the horse stands up in a, in a nice, in a nice fashion, fashioned way. 
I put some references on um, uh, and uh, to, to, to show uh, which you can read up if you want to, um, from which I also I learned a lot because I was quite critical uh, before we started to use it and now um, I we use it on a daily basis. I'm really happy with the, with the effect of the Beamer horse therapy during our general anesthesia. Happy, I'm really happy to ask questions. I hope you have a lot of questions. Hi, Dr. Brandenberger. So yeah, we do have Dr. Vonk. Um, she's a veterinarian. She will be moderating some of the questions that are coming in. But one of the questions that I had, um, was there any issues do, do, when you're using the um, Beamer during anesthesia with regulating uh, objective measurements or changes like heart rate, blood pressure, or were you able to um, compensate the changes with Beamer uh, with dosage fairly easily? So you cannot see um, when you put on the blanket that, the, for example, some the the, the changing of the um, of the blood pressure is immediately. You cannot see the st stuff like that. It's it's more subtle. It's more subtle. It's like the treatment. The treatment is also more subtle. So it's just a general um, a general effect on the whole horse. So the anesthetist will not scream out, oh my God, what's happening when he puts on the blanket? Actually, it just goes on, but you have to tell him to reduce the doses and maybe uh, reduce the, the isoflurane uh, intake of the horse because um, it helps the horse to get the medications in, in the circulation. Yeah, that's great. Uh, we see this also in the human side, supporting the bioavailability and or delivery of either nutraceuticals and or pharmaceuticals to the target tissue. So thank you for that. Dr. Vonk, uh, do you have any um, questions that are relevant uh, that you could uh, either ask myself or Dr. Brandenberger from the folks in the audience? Yes, there is a lot of questions coming. Uh, I, I can't keep up with at the moment. Amazing presentation, Dr. Brandenberger and Dr. Burka. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Um, one question here that I saw that you may be able to answer, Dr. Brandenberger. Uh, what settings uh, were used and how often are you using it more specifically? Oh, yes, I didn't precise this in the, in the presentation. So we use it on the third setting um, during general anesthesia, uh, which is the strongest setting. And we use it for 15 minutes. And same in the recovery box, in the recovery stall, uh, we put on in the third um, setting and again, uh, around 50 minutes, anyway, you have to move afterwards because the horse wants to get up. Uh, this sounds like a question for Dr. Burka. Can you please explain the difference between vasomotion and flow motion? I sure will. And th there, you can't tease them away. It's like fire, uh, flour and water. Uh, the fact is vasomotion is the autorhythmical pulsations which are modulated, modulated and mediated by the nervous system and endothelial nitric oxide. So the nervous system, alpha beta receptors, squeeze the vessels down and open and close them, as well as the endothelial cells are releasing nitric oxide to vasodilate. And it's this yin-yang or this balance that controls these oscillatory rhythms called vasomotion. So that's the structure itself. The function is actually the fluid movement through and how that's flowing, whether it's laminarly, laminar flow is just continuous flow, which the body doesn't do, but pulsation. So flow motion is the pulsatory movement of blood. Vasomotion is the autorhythmical movement of the vessels. I hope that was helpful. Dr. Brandenberger, um, what is the effect of um, anesthesia, particular general anesthesia on the circulation and how specifically does uh, or may the femur help with that? That's, that's a good question. That's a, um, I, if I have to answer this, it takes a long time. Um, the, 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 I think the imminent effect is that the blood is more, more flowing. And um, some, on some horses, we saw that the blood pressure went up and on some horses, we saw that the blood pressure, blood pressure went down. It's also very, very, very individual, I think, um, when you use the, the, the blanket. It depends on what kind of horses uh, you, you're doing and also, I think, on what time during the surgery you're using it. There's, also, there also, there's always a phase where the horse gets down into an into a adequate plane of anesthesia. And afterwards, you start the surgery and there's painful... Um, 
stimuli, stimuli when, when we start to cut or when we suture at the end. So it depends also at what time you use it. We tried to use it in the most, um, let's say, violent time when there is a lot of uh, st stimulation that this also interacts with the blood pressure, for example, and then maybe the beaver blanket uh, helps to counteract these effects. Uh -huh. Dr. Brandenberger, are horses more relaxed during their uh, hospital stay? Are you actually utilizing the Beamer horse set um, on the horses that are hospitalized to begin with uh, for other cases as well, not specific to surgery? And how does that affect them if you do? We use it in a, on a daily basis also before and after surgery and uh, uh, we, we bill it. <laughs> For the, for the owners, if they want it, they can use it. Um, but we make them a bill because it takes uh, time of a nurse to to perform, uh, to get, get go there, put the blanket on. And um, a lot of people, they want that. They pay for that in our clinic, especially. So which means also that because they know their horses, they, think, they seem to, to think that it helps the horses also to be more relaxed in the clinic. Um, Dr. Brandenberger or Dr. Berka, what schedule of regular use would you recommend for a performance horse for overall wellness where no injury is, um, is, is, is yet hopefully not present? <laughs> I'll, start, I'll start with that. Uh, and again, it's very similar to the human. Uh, if somebody is uh, a horse or an owner is trying to keep their horse toned up, uh, from a wellness perspective, the recommendation is daily use, sometimes even BID twice a day. And depending on the uh, situation, whether it's a horse that maybe is a racehorse, maybe you'll use higher levels versus um, maybe a horse that's just recreational, you might use the lower levels, the, love the program one. And so, yeah, just for upkeep, once or twice a day, but maybe more often if they're in transit, if they've just performed, if they have just trained uh, um, doing some exercise or something like that, then you'll maybe use it after that. And I use it more after the performance to support the recovery regeneration phase. I said it early in the presentation, you can't perform unless you recover. And so that is usually that area where it's lacking a bit. And uh, it also supports to regulate that or self-regulate the autonomic nervous system. Dr. Brandenberger, there are a lot of questions about specific usage. Did you want to comment on the usage as well? Yes, I wanted to say um, what uh, I can see or with, with owners in, in our stable, for example, when we, they often put the blanket on uh, in, when they are preparing the horse, when they're walking out the box or something like that, the horse is standing there and has the blanket on. So I think you can use it really good on, the, on a daily basis. Dr. Brandenberger, there are a lot of questions about specific usage on specific injuries, uh, different joints, uh, different leg conditions. Um, can you comment on how, if, if you are already utilizing the Beamer more uh, therapeutically, uh, specifically also in conjunction with the cuffs uh, on uh, in those injured horses that, uh, whether they have surgery or not, but they have to recover from their um, condition. Um, I can I can tell you for the surgery. So um, we have clients that have the Beamer horse uh, set, and uh, after surgery they use it on the operated legs. For example, after um, joint surgeries or after tendon surgeries, um, we have a lot of horses that have uh, problems uh, with the annular ligament. Where when I cut the annular ligament. And um, they use this, uh, I don't know what's the word in English, this gamash, um, this uh, boot. Uh, and uh, I, can, I can only recommend it, absolutely. Dr. Brandenberger, yeah. um, there was a, a question about how did you ensure that this study was done uh, double blinds? Yes, uh, very nice question. Um, so we had uh, two groups of horses. And um, we had a list of, of 100 horses, 100 places, and we, put, we threw a dice before every surgery if the horse went in group A or went in group B. And uh, we prepared the list and then we started or we, we, we went on with the surgeries. And during the surgery, we had um, 
uh, 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 small, uh, young vet who is uh, doing his thesis and he put on the blankets on the horses which were marked with group A and group B. And the, the guys from Beamer, uh, at the beginning of the study, they came to our place and they modulated one of the blankets from uh, group uh, A um, or group B, we didn't know. And they took, out the, um, they took out a little piece so it wasn't working. But from the outside, when you put on, the light was still uh, going up. So it looked like a normal blanket. So our team, our uh, the guy who did the, the, the thesis on he didn't know anything about uh, which which was really the working blanket we just put it on and we got all the data wrote it down at the end we made the results and then we called the beamer guys and then we said um how how does it look like and they had an envelope which they sealed in, uh, before with the which was writing in that the group b was the functioning Beamer set. So it was really double blinded. This is also why I was uh, okay to particip participate in the study because I liked the setting. I'm a um, more scientific person. I like to be critical and I was only uh, okay with the study when I knew that it was double blinded. Dr. Brandenberger, can you comment on uh, what kind of uh, measurements are in place during surgery? Because uh, people are asking, um, how do you even know what kind of effect the, um, the anesthesia has and uh, whether the beamer has an effect on that? How can you measure that? Uh, I, I know there's intensive uh, measuring going on, but can you comment on that? So we start in our clinic, so it, it, every clinic is different. In our clinic, we start before surgery, we take a blood sample. We measure the muscle values, we measure the total protein, and we measure the leukocytes, which are the white blood cells. The horse is then put in general anesthesia, is put on the table, and then he gets, a, as I showed on the picture, invasive blood pressure measurement. This goes throughout the surgery. On the study, we measured it at three time points. During surgery, we take from this arteria, we take blood samples, and we analyze um, the blood gas values, which are uh, uh, arterial O2 pressure, arterial CO2 pressure, pH. And then we, took ven we take venous blood um, to check the lactate also. The um, uh, CK, which is the muscul muscular enzyme is measured. The horses goes back to the recovery stall. In the recovery stall, last blood, blood, blood measurement is taken. And when the horse is getting up again, this is uh, in, here in Germany, we have to document a lot. Unfortunately, we have, when you have an anesthesia problem, the owners, because the horses are also very expensive, the horse, the owners, they uh, like to get into trouble with the vet and try to say that the anesthesia wasn't done in a nice way. So we have to go and we can show them, look here, we have the blood pressure during the search. We have all the values from how many, how much isofluoroid, Isofluorine he got, what's the CK, how was the total protein before surgery. This is a normal documentation we do and we use just the same protocol for the study. Dr. Brandenberger, how long does a typical surgery uh, last? Uh, I, I think specifically in this study and perhaps you have used uh, the Beamer also in conjunction with, uh, with other surgeries already that, that had a longer time period. I like the the question of the audience, which so shows that the audience is really uh, into the topic. Um, I like that a lot. So uh, the, the, the equine surgery field is very broad. You have, um, you have orthopedic surgery, you have colic surgery, you have, as I said, ophthalmologic surgery, larynx surgery, and every surgical type is very different. So I will just focus on the ophthalmolog ophthalmolog ophthalmologic surgery, sorry. Um, that we used uh, for the study because this is always quite the same. So the horses, they have a time of one hour and 15 minutes from drop when they drop into general anesthesia and then being put into the recovery box. It takes about one hour and 15 minutes. This is for horses or horse equine surgery quite a short um, general anesthesia, sometimes, for example, for a colic surgery, it takes about two hours, three hours, four hours of general anesthesia. And this is also interesting for the future. Um, 
we should, as we measured only on the very short uh, anesthesia, the effects, we should also make a study on the longer surgeries. Unfortunately, the only difficulty is um, for these studies, and I want to say that um, just right now, um, for example, a colic surgery is never the same. It's Horses are completely different. They have different conditions. There's a, a small intestine problem, large intestine pro problem, there's stomach problems, Everything's just completely different. And this is difficult then to make a study. You have to have a huge field of horses to make a nice study. In the eye surgery, what we did, we have always the same condition, always the same problem, always the same team. This is why we could study it quite nicely. But it, I agree, it would be interesting to see the effects all also on the, um, scientifically in, uh, in longer anesthesias. When I do longer anesthesia, so in, in our clinic, I, do, I perform the colic surgeries. Um, we also use it in the recovery box because during the colic surgery, there's a lot of um, water and fluid going around. It's difficult to put the nice be uh, beamer blanket um, on the horse, but as soon as the horse is in the recovery, we put it on. Dr. Brandenberger, is there a, a concern for increased bleeding during surgery, considering that the beamer enhances microcirculation? I have not seen that. Um, and I can tell you that our um, uh, ophthalmologic surgeon, Dr. Laser, who is performing the surgery, he is very keen not to have bleeding in the eye when he does the eye surgery, because as soon as there's blood, he cannot see anything at all. So, and he didn't complain about that as well. Yeah. This, this was the bleeding. Sorry, the bleeding is more um, also uh, a surgeon, um, a, a problem of the surgeon. Sometimes when you cut on the wrong place, it's bleeding uh, more. Um, this was actually a funny question. Um, how could uh, the beamer blanket normally um, goes around the horse body when it's standing? And so the box will be, the control box will be on the left side. Someone was asking, how can it be if the horse is laying on its left side, he still can get the beamer blanket applied? I, I should have uh, made a video of how our, uh, our, um... Uh, a vet who is doing the study, you just have to go under the horse and uh, put it on. It's okay. It, it's working. Yeah. So he was he was crumpling down and um, activated it like that. I, I also saw, saw the picture of one of your pictures is actually uh, more like the draping of the of the horse set on the on the horse body in in lateral lateral position, right? So the top, the top blankets, not the question, or I understood, misunderstood. The top blankets, you can always get access to the to the small orange box, and the, the bottom blanket, you just have to put it as in a fashion that you can get access to the small orange box when you put the horse on it. So a little bit more in front, more to the shoulder, for example. This is an interesting question, actually, from a veterinarian. How do you, did you use anything to prevent the surgical team from exposure to the beamer horse set signal? Which um, I actually think that's, I don't know if that's, you know, that's maybe beneficial for the surgeons having to go through a long, through a long surgery. <laughs> so uh, we were asking the, the beamer guys to get us um, one of these beamer couches to between surgeries to get, uh, to relax on. Um, no, back to the question, sorry. Um, this, uh, I think the, what I learned from Beamer and maybe um, Dr. Berger can help me. I think the, 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 the coil makes the signal going down from the coil to the inside and not to the outside. Anyway, it's not a bad signal. So I would be happy to, to get it. But I think the coil is made that uh, it goes on the inside. So just to comment on that, the coils are by, they um, do emit bilateral fields. So from the inside to the out. However, ladies and gentlemen, it's important to remember uh, physics law. Electromagnetic fields decrease exponentially with distance. So if you're even feet away, you will have very little impact uh, on the human body from the electromagnetic field. In addition, from the previous question, uh, yes, the Beamer blanket is set up that they are uh, coils around the nerve plexes. However, you can have very similar, if not the same effect, 
by draping it over because it's not just about the induction, the inductive field that is interacting. It's about the very specific signal that's supporting microcirculation by resuscitation of vasomotor function. Um, Dr. Brandenberger, um, these study, uh, studies are, um, are still to be published in preliminary. Can you already say something about uh, recommending, people are asking, asking how the Beamer War set could be used uh, by the general public and vet clinics for uh, surgeries and um, equine hospitals, how they would do that. Is, is there already a, a quote unquote blanket recommendation you can give? And Dr. Um, respond as well. I think I, I did uh, show how we use it now after the study, we use it before and during and uh, especially after the surgery. This is all I have experience with. I'm happy with that. I use it on the third degree for 15 minutes on these horses. Uh, my nurses do this and um, I didn't test anything else because I know with that it works. Um, I don't have a special recommendation uh, on anything else. And I, and I agree. Um, I like before, during, after. One of the most beneficial times is uh, post-surgery um, because, the, again, the focus is to resuscitate vasomotion from the impaired impact of the uh, therapeutic, in this case, the anesthesia. And so you want to, after the half light, is to try to bring that out to bring the human or the horse uh, out gently from being under. Uh, Dr. Burke, maybe you can answer these uh, two questions. There's a lot of questions about, um, you know, will a beam or horse set help with XYZ condition, um, health, disease or condition? And also the question, um, how long does a session um, last in a healthy horse? Yeah, so the, I mean, sessions are five, 10 and 15 minutes. So in general, um, you, you could use level three all the time, but uh, what I like to do is if it depends on the time and it depends on the horse more specifically and depends on what the intention is. Let's talk about these diseases quick because regardless of the actual um, disease name, I don't care about that. And what I do care about is all functionality, both either physiologically or pathophysiologically are directly related to functional blood flow, which is modulated or mediated by the nervous system, by the balance of the autonomic nervous system. And so this is where Beamer's sweet spot is, is keeping that horse in that active ready state and allowing them to move into either a run or a, or a rest and digest state. And so keeping that fine line, and that's the aspect of wellness for a horse. And for many horses uh, with tendencies to anxiety or gastrointestinal issues that may not be structural, but more functional because of stress, anxiety, that's where you can see this really shine. Dr. Brandenberger, um, there's also a lot of questions coming in of people asking about performance horses. And I thought, since you mentioned you have five uh, jumping horses, can you comment on um, how the use of the Beamer horse set has worked for you in your own horses? Um, then, I, luckily, my, uh, my wife is not uh, sitting next to me, but she has a very difficult mare, um, which is uh, quite, uh, I, I'd like to say, hibbly or active uh, before before the the show the show, show jumping show and we put it on just to calm her down that's that's one of the best things we do my my own horse has um head shaking unfortunately and um i use it uh, once or twice a week uh, especially on the sunny days um to uh, to help him Can um, Dr. Brandenberger and or Dr. Burka, can you comment on how the Beamer helps, uh, the Beamer horse that helps with injury recovery after surgery? Like what is the mechanism? I would, I would love to study this. Um, I, would I would love to study this also on the wound healing. So uh, this would be for me a future um, study that we should do also again double blinded to see if the wound healing or for example when we remove the when we remove uh, we do a lot of um, orthopedic surgeries where we remove, uh, remove the OCD chips from the articulations uh, if there's a better uh, faster wound healing if the wound holes closes quicker this would be interesting also to study but I, I, I didn't study it yet 
Yeah, that's a great question, uh, Dr. Vonk. And what I can say is this, I talked about self-regulation, auto-regulation. Many people think that the goal is to stop or to halt inflammation. And the truth is inflammation is a very important part of the regeneration process. So the modulation of moving into the upregulation of inflammation and into the resolution phase is very, very important. Beamer does not suppress inflammation. Beamer supports the movement through that inflammatory process. So it's more pro-inflammatory to help with the resolution phase. Folds full circle into wound healing because yes, there's different rates and rhythm of blood flow during different phases of wound care. And to get granular Dr. Brandenberger and really get in there and to see what type of tissue interactions with the nervous system, with the microvessels, uh, that's key. And I certainly look forward to uh, future research. Dr. Brandenberger, uh, first, someone would like to know if you speak French. Yes, I do. My wife is actually from Belgium, so we speak French at home. And also, if the Beamer cuffs can be used over the top of a medical bandage or standing wrap when dealing with uh, injury recovery. That's an that's a absolutely good question. And I asked the same uh, to the Beamer guys, and they told me yes. Yes, and we, we commonly do that also. It goes through the blanket for that matter. Um, maybe you can comment to this. Are there any certain circumstances where you feel the high intensity setting should not be used? Um, and then there is there is questions about, um, you know, the common digestive concerns in horses. Um, uh, can you answer to that compliantly for the North American market? <laughs> um, so I'm um, I'm surgeon, and and I'm a vet uh, who is using um, uh, Western um, medicine, and so I also use, for example, uh, cortisone, which is a strong medication. And for me, I always apply it in the third setting because I want to have the biggest effect out of it. So I didn't, uh, I didn't try the other ones out. In my experience, I know that um, uh, people, maybe they should start with the smallest one and see how, what is the effect on their horses. Uh, what do you think, uh, Joshua? Yeah, Dr. Brandenberger, I agree with you. And you mentioned something very important, the combination of using like, for instance, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories or true corticosteroids, which are suppressive type of therapeutics. Beamer is a pro-inflammatory type of thing. I said, moving through the inflammatory process. When you're using corticosteroids and things of that nature, what can occur is that can halt that inflammatory process, which is the goal, but higher doses are generally needed when somebody or a horse is under the influence of either chronic use of uh, corticosteroids. And so in those cases, I do use higher levels or recommend higher levels. Those horses that are more skittish or more jumpy I generally will take to the lower levels um, with the lower outputs. But again, the maximum flux density output from the Beamer blanket is around 35 and 100 on the, uh, the cuffs. Note, the geomagnetic field of the earth is about 50 microtesla. So even at 100 microtesla, it's not very high whatsoever. A cell phone emits up to five, six, seven hundred microtesla. Again, it's not about just the induction, Faraday, uh, that, that type of inductive capacity. It's also about the information that's being passed in the body to help support not just the local target tissue, but systemically as a whole for that uh, equine user. So uh, I'm being told that the time of the webinar is unfortunately um, done, but uh, we have so many questions. We definitely have not <laughs> gotten by any means to the end, but I promise that everyone will get an answer. Uh, because we do have uh, a way of contacting you since you registered with your email. So uh, I'm going to pass it on to, to Dr. Burka to, to close. And uh, thank you so much for answering this many questions. Actually, I think that goes to you, Miranda, doesn't it? Indeed, it sure does. <laughs> that is me to wrap it up. Um, very sad. Um, this has been an out standing session. I mean, it's just unbelievable with the technical questions. Um, you can really tell the engagement and interaction. Um, excellent, excellent. Um, I would like to tell the audience as well that there, um, there will be and there always will be a recording available. 
Um, so we will be posting that on our web handles. And there is also an archive where you can where where it will be housed and where you'll be able to see all of the, the videos thus far. Um, we're also going to be working with our marketing team to be sending out a push so that you to make sure that everyone has um, the recording, which I know um, this has been an incredibly popular popular session. So I want to make sure that everyone is able to to watch. So um, yeah, so thank you all so much. Um, I will say Dr. Joshua Burka um, and Dr. Olivia Brandenberger, of course, who is joining us all the way in Europe. It is midnight. Well, no, it's actually like 1 a.m. his time. So thanks so much for, for staying up with us and delivering such an excellent presentation. And of course, I'll also say um, to Marlise, our excellent moderator, um, who did a fantastic job with the Q&A. So um, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'd also like to say thank you to Beamer for your generous sponsorship of this session. And, and now to you, participants. Please join us next Thursday for more continued learning at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for WEF Week 10. That session's title will be Blue Ribbon Wound Care, Vet Blue, a new way to manage infection and speed up wound healing, sponsored by Vet Blue. I also would like to say one more thing that we do have um, your information, every question that, you're, that you have um, sent in, we have it linked to your email. We'll definitely be getting um, the answers to your questions. We've just been inundated with questions and unfortunately not enough time. So sad, um, but you definitely plan to get a response directly from the Beamer team. Now on that note, um, don't forget, of course, to register for next week directly on the PDIEC website to secure your spot and to count for one entry for the grand prize giveaway from Karina Brez Jewelry. And as well, we are very international, I will say good morning. Good afternoon, good evening, or good night. Thank you all for joining and hope to see you all next week. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>